Hey, Gregor Artero here. Um, so, I had a little revelation this morning. Really, it's a simple revelation in terms of how it works. But, I want to show you a concept of how we get the resonant circuit working with impulse DC in the coil, and not, say, an oscillating current, or alternating current. And I consider the two to be different. But, here we are in my lab. Um, so, let's, uh, point. Do -do -do -do. There. All right, so we got the uh, the fire sequence of the triad coil. The thing to realize, actually, I'll pull this back up on me. Uh, the thing to realize is there's two types of charges moving in this coil, positive and negative. Okay. To fully understand this, we have to sort of throw out the old paradigm of the electron for a second, because at the moment we consider the electron to be the only thing moving in a circuit, nothing else the positive charge is stationary. I've had a hard time thinking about this myself, and I've, this has come up in many discussions with people, including this morning, um, I had to talk to someone about, you know, anti-hydrogen being found, or being harvested with the uh, with CERN in Switzerland, um, and the whole idea of an antiparticle. Now, if some of you have seen the show Fringe, which I'm a big fan of, it's the only show I've been watching, I would love to be in Walter's position. And, uh, these two universes coexisting at the same time. And it's the whole idea that the electron is coexisting with a positron. When we bring a positron to this reality, it doesn't last long. It doesn't last long at all until it sort of falls apart. And in my opinion, the electron is coexisting with the positron at all times. It's the only way for it to exist. And so when you have a coil, you have the electrons and positrons moving through it. Okay? So wrap your head around that for a second. Um, I'm not a definitive authority on that fact. I said right there, I'm saying that's how I feel intuitively about the situation. They do have two energies moving at the same time. Okay. Um, we have a capacitor. You have negative charges and positive charges on one plate. We usually just see the protons, but I feel like there's some sort of positron sort of thing going on there at the same time. But uh, that can be debated by lots of people. But let me put this concept forth. All right. So, we have uh, the firing sequence of a triad coil. Remember, this relates to the rotating coil, too, and other star coils. People have been working on star geometry. Um, triad coil is just the easiest to explain it with. It's just the simplest. All right. And so, what happens is you have two negative charges moving through the circuit. We'll say this is moving counterclockwise. Right? Two negative charges moving through the circuit. And these are two negative charges. These are two positive charges. Okay? Um, so two negative charges, two positive charges, and they're all moving counterclockwise in it. There's no reversal of motion. So what happens when you have a negative charge, say create one full loop. We'll say this is one loop of the inductor. Okay. When that happens, there's going to be a back EMF. Okay. And so when this moves on, this builds up a whole magnetic field going the way around, and then it starts to collapse. Now when the magnetic field collapses, all right, it will want to pull the there's back pressure on the electron. It wants to get pulled backwards. But the thing is, what about the positive charge? When the positive charge is moving counterclockwise, it's creating a magnetic field in the opposing direction. So basically, you can say at all times, a negative charge has a vacuum in front of it and behind it. It wants to be pulled forward and it wants to be pulled backwards from the collapse and EMP of itself end of the opposing charge. So, see this is, we'll just say this is negative over here and this is positive, okay? And when it moves through the circuit, the collapsing, um, the collapsing field will either, from the collapsing field from the positive charge wants to pull this one forward. And the collapsing charge of the electron wants to pull the positive charge forward. It can also go backwards. Um, however, the thing is, the charges already have inertia. So, they're going to go with inertia. Um, the direction they're already moving. And so, say this is a, a, a negative charge here, and this is a positive charge, okay? So we've got the six and the three, all right? Now, the, um, let me think about this for a second. So, this negative charge over here just went through this whole loop, okay? That field's gonna start to collapse. As this is collapsing, there's pressure coming from this way. 
as this one's moving forward. One step away from this magnetic field. It's going to get pulled toward this. So once it gets down here, this field is ready to start collapse. Um, and this one is now collapsed halfway until it comes up to the top where it's fully collapsed. This field is now fully collapsed. Um, however, it just started creating a field in the opposing direction. Um, and so it doesn't have that pull from that collapsing magnetic field. That Thus it's at the apex of the uh, loop of wire. And then it starts building it, it's building its magnetic field. Um, and I can see this is a little scatterbrained and it's, it's something I'm working with. But the idea, say this is the basic idea, okay? Um, and it would be awesome if someone could fine tune this concept for me. Um, even though I'm, I'm going to work on it myself, um, but we should, all should. And uh, is the collapsing uh, magnetic field or the back EMF of a charge will pull the opposing charge forward. Um, and so the positive and negative charges will constantly feed off each other's electric and magnetic fields, creating a perfect resonant circuit. A resonant circuit that is cyclical instead of linear because the resonant circuits we've been using are linear resonant circuits where the oscillation is going back and forth. This is one big thing that Tesla talked about is you do not want a reversal of current. That reversal of current does not happen normally in um, in nature. This is why we're getting all this EM radiation. I can feel this pouring off of me. Ooh, love that fluorescent. Okay? It's just everywhere because you're having alternating currents, reversal of currents. There is no reversal of currents in nature. A river doesn't suddenly stop flowing and start flowing uphill. Um, it keeps going. And things move in pulses. And that's what the coil is exhibiting. This, that is nature. So, stay nature. Helps out uh, in terms of understanding all of this. So, uh, that right there is showing um, how the coil works as a resonant circuit with impulse DC and when you have the two charges moving around together two of the same charges so two negative charges and two positive charges the midpoint in between them these are two negative will create a positive charge in between them this shows how Cooper pairs form in the coils to manifest superconductivity hopefully that being room temperature superconductivity and that temperature is not a problem it's about geometry and that why we have no superconductivity superconductivity before in low temperature materials is because that temperature allows the vibration of the lattices of the materials to get low enough to set up these forms of geometry to allow superconductive current and that the property of superconductivity is of the current itself thus found through geometry so there's my idea um, I'll show you a little surprise is this I'm working on uh, this is one of the uh, the molds, the scotch tape, um, and I filled this all in, um, so it's nice and smooth, but I got one side going with a rubber mold, and it's pretty much almost done. I've been putting lots of layers of latex rubber on this, and soon enough I will have a, a nice ge ge geometrical ratio, the right geometrical ratio mold for a rotting coil, and I'll start having fun with that guy. Um, so until then, adios. You all have a good one. Oh, I'll share one little other concept. Uh, when I'm going to be putting this, I'm going to be putting um, aluminum powder with plaster of Paris. I'm going to be working on um, instead of doing solid metal at the moment, just in terms of finances. I'm still going to work. I still want to do a bismuth core, a bismuth tin core, and uh, maybe a bismuth aluminum core, and also an aluminum core, which I do have, and I'll be running experiments on that and showing you guys uh, the triac coil with the aluminum core that I have. Um, which is paramagnetic, and I made a discovery, I didn't make a discovery, I, I found some experimentation just to confirm this. Um, it's the same notion as if you have a, there's a video out there somewhere that shows, you know, you take an aluminum plate, you stick it in a phone book, you put that phone book over a, um, a very powerful AC magnet, alternating current electromagnet, and the book will hover, okay? It's the same concept with this, alright? You put this guy over a changing magnetic field and it's conductive it, a currents in the material will cause it to create a very diamagnetic strong re um, response and it will repel or levitate 
um, which then you can start to work with frictionless coils, and they'll just spin on their own. Um, you just gotta get them into motion. And so, um, a conductive substance in its simplest self will work. And then I've always loved aluminum. Its atomic number is 13. 13 is such a great number. And so I think I'm gonna uh, play around with that a little bit. But the idea of using um, an organite core, essentially, so aluminum powder with say epoxy resin, or uh, uh, or plaster of Paris, and plaster of Paris has some more interesting properties, in my opinion. Not as good as the dielectric. But um, the idea is it's almost like you have all these little mini resonant circuits within the coil when you make them into a more organite fashion, and that you'll have oscillation charges within each little um, each little particle of aluminum. And um, then you also are working with the conductive energy and the dielectric energy at the same time, or electric energy and dielectric energy within the coil. And that's a whole other conversation, but something to you know, throw out there. I think there's validity in using organite as cores um, and focusing more on the electrical properties of the, the materials, such as di uh, its dielectric um, strength and the conductive, um, the conductivity of the metals. Um, there's a lot more other concepts you can take into consideration what makes the best. But that's what you know science is about. You gotta start experimenting and trying different materials and different concepts and seeing how they work. So this is uh, Gregor Otero and I am signing off. Ciao.